I'm so thrilled. All right, preview of coming attractions. <laughs> <laughs> So, and she is fired up, and she's never fired up, but uh, oh. I see you fired up today for once. <laughs> yeah, well, praise God. The Lord is just so good, and I'm just so thankful. Yeah. I'm so thankful. You know, let me tell you something. I can say this much. When there is a desire in each of us to bear fruit, amen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we have to be patient for God to be the fruit bearer. Yeah. Yeah. To bring okay. it. Yeah. And there is a temptation to try and make it work. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just said to my husband, when I got out of the shower, I said, Dad, you know, um, desiring to see the manifestation of fruit can be very deceptive. Mm. Because is it because we love people and we want to see people set free? Mm. Or do we want validation? Mm. Or to make us feel good? Yeah. exactly and i said jimmy i remember years ago when i was in the word of faith and um i mean i was seeking the lord with all my heart you know and i said lord manifest yourself in my life so they'll know i'm right <laughs> <laughs> and you know what scripture came to me as it came out of my mouth as i was telling my husband you ask and you ask amiss that yeah. you may consume it upon your flesh. Yeah. And God is not going to validate that belief system. No. Because that is the fruit of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shh. Yeah. yeah. Let me show up and show out so everybody will know I'm right. Yeah, oh, exactly. He's just not going to agree with that. No. Yeah. Amen. You know, Sunday was incredible. You know, Mike and Jack's message was so good, but I got to tell you something. Before they even preached, I was so blessed. And I was to the point, I wanted to preach. Oh my goodness, just a song. I don't even know what the song was, but it mm -hmm. was anointed. And it was something about Jesus being born. And I had a core moment. Mm. And you know, I'll tell you something. You can listen to preaching and preaching and preaching. You can study the word and study the word and study the word. But when God causes you to have a core moment, where his thoughts become your thoughts. Yeah. And your thoughts are twisted together with his thoughts and he mm. brings you into his reality. Mm. Oh, man, you are good to go. It's fellowship, mother. It God. was just, mm. and the, the reality, I mean, come on. We know that you know, Jesus was God and he was born in a manger. You know, he was, you know, he was put in a manger. But the truth that the God of the universe so loved us. So loved. That he incarnated himself yes. to human flesh yes. with the intent to grow up to become the Lamb of God, to take away the sin of the world, when the, the full import of that truth hits your heart, oh my goodness, it is just like, oh, how he loves you and me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. That's the and fullness of life. When you, you, know, you come into greater levels of the height, width, and depth of the love of God, 
you're filled with the fullness of his life. Absolutely. God, you know, he take he takes me back, keeps taking me back to that first love, my first encounter. Yes. The Lord was his love and I was filled with the fullness of his life. And then I went to church and I said, what happened? Yeah. You know? And it's just like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all about that. It's about knowing the love that God has for us, the depths of his love. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the scripture in, in Hebrew says, the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. But Habakkuk, from whence that was quoted, yep. says, the just shall live by his faith. Yeah. There's a big difference mm -hmm. between oh, yeah. living by our faith and living by his faith. And that my faith will keep me on a treadmill of trying. Whereas yes. his faith causes me to just sit and listen to God's good view and opinion of me and Thank let you. him pamper my heart um, that I may experience his love to such a degree that that faith is empowered by that love. Yeah. It's not me trying to work up my faith. It's me opening myself up to the love of God so that his faith will work in me. Faith works by love. That's right. Amen. Yeah. When, you're, when you were talking in the beginning about the temptation of, of looking to the flesh to try and hurry up the fruit or produce the fruit instead of just, uh, just it really God is the one that brings forth the fullness of his life in our life. That's right. Our heart is persuaded, but I was, I had just written down Jeremiah 17 earlier. Yes. Five through eight. And he says, thus saith the Lord. And we used to read this scripture different through the carnal lens too. Like, yes. God, was, uh -huh. like God was the one that was doing the cursing. Right. Know? Yes. <laughs> but he says, thus saith the Lord, curse is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. And it says, uh, whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but will inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land, which is not inhabited. And he says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. And will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. <laughs> Amen. Will not cease from yielding fruit. Yes, absolutely. You know, what's the difference? So it difference is one, it's where you're looking, you know? Amen. Where your trust is. And and really the faith. What's a game changer? A lot of things have been game changers for me in the last couple of years. You know, it's like we're learning a whole new different language, right? Through, yeah. through uh, coming back to the right definition of words and, and meanings. And, and one is the faith, where we always have been taught that it's somehow our faith, you know, that we, we must muster up the faith to believe, <laughs> which kept us occupied with the flesh. <laughs> yeah. Right? And which is, is God's not in agreement with that, you know, because you know, the faith is the persuasion of God. Grace and faith are gifts of God. We're saved by grace, right? Through faith Amen. and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen. <laughs> so it's like the faith has always been there persuading our hearts to trust in the Lord for life. You know, for the fullness of life comes from him. It doesn't come from our our own uh, flesh, but the carnal mind born out of death is what continues to persuade the world and a lot of Christians to be occupied with uh, the flesh. Yeah. What they must produce like Cain and Abel, like Cain bringing forth his own fruit to God, you know? Amen. There's no fruit at all. You can't bring forth fruit from the flesh. I mean, it's, it's not going to be good fruit. It's going to be fruit of death. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> you bring up pain. I was just reading yesterday that there was two trees in the garden mm -hmm. by Rick Joyner. Yeah. And he was saying that Cain and Abel were the fruit of the two trees. Mm. Cain represented the tree wow. of the knowledge of good and evil works. Right. And Abel, the tree of life. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, that scripture that you read in Jeremiah, it goes with Psalm 1, 1. Mm. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Mm. The ungodly are those that believe that they are what they do. Don't listen to that. Mm -hmm. Nor standeth in the way of scorners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that word law is Torah. Yeah. Jesus is the true law of God. So right. my delight is in Jesus. Yeah. And his law, doth he meditate day and night. I meditate on God's good view and opinion of me and, and how much he loves me, mm. how much he loves the world. And he shall be like a tree mm. planted by the rivers of water mm -hmm. that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You mm. know, there's a season. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There's a season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like yesterday, I was like, Lord, what am I going to minister on Sunday? I want a word that will bless the people. Mm. And I spent hours, but I just didn't feel a click, you know? Mm -hmm. And then this morning, out of love for another, I got the word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I got the word. Yeah. It'll be like a, a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Jim's a little late because he went on his walk and he had to take a shower. Hello, folks. Hey, Jimmy. Hi. How you doing, Jimmy? I'm doing good, thank you. Oh, good. You look great. You look great. Well, I'm clean anyway. I just had a shower. <laughs> Well, you look great and smell great, huh? <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> yeah, I, I have a little walk. I go around the grounds. Uh, I can't ride a bicycle yet. Yeah. I can walk. Yeah, you do what you can do, right? You do it. what yeah. you can do. Amen. Can I keep the motor running, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You invited me just in case you wondered where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice of her. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, I'll tell you something. Living in his faith yeah. is rest. Yes. Living in our faith is labor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Toil and labor. It's toil and labor. Yes. Absolutely. It, to, to enter into the finished work of Christ is to enter into his rest. And um, it's not about us. It's all about him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so thankful. I'm just so thankful. Jesus is so wonderful. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, my goodness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so thankful. Glory to God. Jesus is so wonderful. You know, I listened to uh, 
Maurice's message. Did you listen to Maurice? Yep. That was yes. so wonderful. Oh my goodness. One thing that really popped when he spoke was um, whosoever has the love of the world in him, the love of the father is not in him. Whosoever right. loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. Right. And it's all it is, is if you, if you are looking to the world right. to give you life, right then you have not received the love of the father and your heart has not been persuaded that he is your father and right. you're not an orphan and he right. will take care of you right and wow he talks about you know the spirit holy spirit is sent in us you know, uh, and, you know, to show us that we're not orphans, that, you know, that God is our father and that we're loved, greatly loved by God, always have been, always have been. But it's been these doctrines of, you know, sinners in the hands of an angry God and all these things, <clears throat> or re really doctrines of demons. Yes, really. it I'll is. just say it like it is. I mean, you know, people aren't going to like it, but because it comes uh, contrary to everything they've been taught. But many of these theologies, doctrines, have been born from uh, the carnal mind. Absolutely. And they get away with it because it's counted as, yeah. as something religious. Yeah. But it's just as, just as bad as any, any sin that anyone could get involved in. It's, no it's so deceptive. Yeah. Because it looks good, good for a life. Good for food, right? Good for food. <laughs> Absolutely. And listen, when we say these things, we're saying it from a place where we've been there, done that, bought the teacher. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm not hey, saying, hey. you know, I'm not saying I was never there because I was oh. there to preach it. I used to be a master at driving people to the altar. <laughs> exactly. Me too. Me you too. Know, every Sunday, get saved again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I used to be the one going up to the altar. Again. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> well, it was my job to beat the sheep. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know, we laugh about that, but it's, uh, we laugh in that we are delivered from it. Yes. Yes. I, I remember going up to uh, that uh, plaque and the stone and everything up in Connecticut and reading about that sinners in the hands of an angry god yeah and, 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 that ignorance. and then after i learned better it it was such a mockery mm. such mm. a mockery yeah is it any wonder why the lord said in ezekiel 36 oh. you have profaned my name among the heathen just there. Mm. yeah i don't think anything grieves the holy spirit more then you know because when i came to my revelation of grace i had gone through major deliverance through a book that i read because i was being tormented by demons this is when i was 22 and so i followed like her instructions of closing every door on demons and confessing every sin i any anything like uh, my list was like three pages long and my husband did it with me and his was only half a page long it was like but i i just wanted to give my life to god but i did have this perspective that he had been punishing me that he was angry with me like hmm. turning to him with my whole entire self was the scariest thing I had ever done but it wasn't it was it was the fear of it was the dark darkness type of fear the right. enemy's fear and so when when it was finished we anointed the house I I went ahead and I cried and I mean I was really being tormented by demons I'm telling you it was horrible but I woke up the next day and it was like heaven opened up and i wasn't even looking for eternal life or heaven i was just looking for um god to help me 
because I was in such a bad place. I was suicidal. I just wanted to be a good mom. That's the only thing I wanted because mm. my girls were really little. Mm. And I had this revelation of eternal life. And that wasn't even part of, I wasn't even looking for eternal life. But then, mm. you know, the father started to introduce himself to me and wooing me. And he gave me Ezekiel 34, mm. uh, probably about two weeks in. And and he, and I just knew it was like a download that none of those things that I confessed or wrote down were important to him. The only thing that hurt his heart, like it made me cry because I felt that hurt that he he felt that mm. I was afraid to go to him. And it wasn't, and it was also that righteous anger at the religious abuse I had suffered growing up that had given me that um, ex those experiences to taint the image of him. That was the only thing that separated me from my father mm. and hurt his heart. Yeah, I've never felt that grieving of the Holy Spirit like I did at that time. Yeah, we've uh, believed, uh, uh, you know, a, a graven image of God. That's not God at all. You know, just like uh, Mabula says, in fact, I was listening to Matt's, that's an excellent uh, message, Matt yeah. Priest a few months ago, Matt Moore, yeah. on, on the uh, the great contradiction. I would encourage people to yeah, go back and good. revisit that because he was in Ezekiel 36. That's what, that was his, his scripture. So when you brought that up, I said, okay, we're on to something here <laughs> because... You know, he talks about in Ezekiel 36 and 22, he says, therefore says to the house of Israel, uh, the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations, wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I hallowed when I am hollowed in you before their eyes. Amen. And that's what's happening today through this word of, of, you know, truth and life. You know, the gospel, the true gospel is, is being restored back, you know, into our, into the church, into our ears. And God's name is uh, being hollowed, you know, that's right. you know the, the, his name has been profaned in a sincere way. Okay, people have done it with sincerity, you know, yeah. uh, just walking in what they've been taught for generations, you know, sinners in the hands of an angry God is really to profane the name of God. That's not who he is. Yeah. Not who he is. God has always, you know, God says, I'm God, I change not. He's always been love. That's how yeah. <laughs> it's our perspective of God that has been changed, you know. And uh, we, we saw God, or man has seen God through the, the carnal mind, right? Well, Israel was no different, you know, like they wouldn't go near the mountain. They were, they were afraid of God too, you know, they, they always had to have a go-between, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that hurt God's heart <laughs> too, you know? That's where people are today. Yeah, that is where people are they today. They still have to have a go-between, they think. <laughs> right i know i know and it is it's deceptive it's so subtle because you know like eight years into my grace walk i was just doing my own thing because i was just so happy i was forgiven like i was on <laughs> i had a year-long honeymoon like i'm telling you like i remember there was times i walked into the kitchen one time and I thought like, I th felt like I was floating up into the ceiling and I was going to hit my head on the ceiling fan. <laughs> <laughs> I had to look up. My husband goes, what's the matter? And I said, I think I'm a little too drunk on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but it lasted a long time. And my only like desire was just to share this message. So I shared it on the street. I went downtown to the park where all the homeless and the youth hung out. And I learned how to play the, like I already played the guitar, but I learned how to play some uh, some Christian music. I wrote my own songs and they would come and 
you know, smoke their joints and listen to me play guitar. And that's, you know, how a lot of the Christians in the city came to know me. Like, who's this girl, right? What's she doing, right? And, um, but as I became closer and closer to like, you know, like I was asked to work in the ministry and, you know, like, and these were all good intended people. It's nothing against them. They were deceived themselves. Like, you know, the pastor that hired me, but, um, it was, you know, like within it's, it's like peer pressure, but at the same time, it really did burn away whatever was remaining. Like I think about that. I mean, it's been 30 years since I had that first grace awakening and I've gone through that. Like you, Rick, it's similar to you because you had a true encounter with God and then went into the ministry and kind of got sucked in. And Beulah as well. I know that you, because you were young, right? 16 or something. when you. No, I was 25. Oh, okay. 25. I'm just very old. <laughs> oh, I thought you were young when you received Jesus. No, no. You know, uh, you brought up Ezekiel 34. And yes. Ezekiel 34 is about the good shepherd. Yeah. You know, in John 10, when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, uh, that meant a lot to the Pharisees. Oh, yes. <laughs> because in Ezekiel 34, the yeah. Lord said, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Mm. You eat the fat, you clothe you with the wool, you kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. Mm. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty, mm. you've ruled them. Wow. You know, is that not what is going on today? Is yeah, it's, it was, church? yeah, it went on when I was a little girl. My mom got, you know, she was delivered from, she was a white witch, like, and I was only four years old, you know, and I remember, like, it was like day and night. I woke up one day and it was like suddenly like the curtains were open and the lights were on and she was singing and full of joy. Like she was just like as a little girl witnessing that. It was pretty amazing. Mm. And, and you, you know, he goes on to say, I'll jump down to 11. But thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. Yeah. That's right. As a shepherd, seek mm -hmm. about his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep. Oh, praise God when Jesus says, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. They knew that he was saying he was God. Yes. Yeah. Before Abraham was, I am. Yep. <laughs> he says, I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountain of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture. Yes. He yes. leads us into green pastures. Hallelujah. And upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be, and they shall lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. A fat <laughs> pasture. Um, that reminds me of Isaiah 25 when he says, he said, in this mountain, hallelujah. In this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all the people a feast of fat things, 
a feast of wines on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow, of wine on the leaves well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain. This is Calvary. The face of the covering cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. A feast of fat things. Glory to God. Yeah, the Lord brought the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat on his table. Right. And that meat is Jesus. And we are feeding on the best. Amen. The best. The fat. The fat was always saved for God. Because yeah. that represented the best. That's right, yeah. And, and the Lord gave us the best. He gave us the fat. Hallelujah. Yeah, the overflow, right? It's yes. the overflow. Yeah, the finest of wheat. It's the, it's the one thing we can never eat too much of, right? That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. I say I'm, I'm not only gluten-free, but I'm guilt-free. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matt was in that. He was quoting in Galatians 3, 23, 25, uh, when you talk about, you know, Christ and the faith. And it says, but before faith came, but before faith came, we were kept under the guard of the law, kept for the faith which would after be re afterward be revealed therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to christ see in that same sentence to bring us to christ to bring yes. us to the faith <laughs> to the right faith. Yes. that we might be justified by the faith yeah but after faith has come we're no longer under a tutor and he was talking about you know uh how even the law through the carnal mind has been so grossly misinterpreted you know as the thing that was serving us with with death you know mm -hmm. and condemnation we know the law was spiritual but we were carnal sold under sin yeah you know? but the law was given to to really point us to the faith to come to point us to christ that we would be just by not by the law but by the faith yep yeah it's like um first john three twenty was the verse that you know really brought me back into the revelation of grace in 2012 when god started to woo me out of my striving it wasn't like it was because it wasn't like i was like had gone into religion but I had lost my identity in Christ through my divorce and losing my kids and everything. So I, I had fallen into this striving again, in, not to be like religious, but just doing everything in my own strength to make things happen when and how I thought they needed to be happening. And it, it was bad too. You know, so he brought me back, but the one verse, um, 1 John 3, 20, if our hearts um, condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. And that's where the faith of the son of God come, come into perspective for me, because like in Hebrews where um, the covenant is explained, like God made a covenant with God and we were brought into that covenant so that it's his faithfulness that's why faith is a fruit of the spirit one of the fruits that is listed in galatians 
And and I'm remind he Holy Spirit reminds me of that whenever I feel like, you know, I'm I'm gonna like I'm not, you know, I'm about to perform, right? <laughs> when the world is pressing in on me, right? His faithfulness is I love how Malcolm teaches on his his faithfulness. His um he brings out the original Hebrew in the Old Testament and through the Psalms. So David talked about God's loving kindness, and it's like his faithfulness is the same thing. But his faithfulness towards us is what keeps us safe and secure in him. And that's in the finished work of Christ. And I, I, you know, it's like the fear of the Lord comes in there too, right? Because it's his faith. If we start to wander off and, and exercise our own faith, like you said, Eula, um, like I, I had a friend that got lost in the word of faith movement and I seen what it did to her and, and, um, and I couldn't believe how self-righteous she became just after like, you know, three months, you know, mm -hmm. she, she got caught up in, uh, I guess I won't say his name because this is being recorded. So, so some popular teachers teaching. <laughs> I think the, the good side of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is more deceptive than the evil. Yes. It yeah. is for yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it looks good it, it looks good for food right it looks good yeah. it looks it, it seems reasonable it seems reasonable you yeah. know i mean what's the matter with wanting to be holy <laughs> the only problem is you can't get there from here <laughs> you can't get there by your effort either you receive what god says about you you know, like when he said to me years ago, Pula, I am holy and I made you in my image. So what are you? Mm -hmm. I'm like, holy? <laughs> holy? Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's that easy? <laughs> I, mean, I am striving, you know? And uh, it, your, your works didn't work, did they? No, you can't, you can't clothe yourself. You'll, you, no matter how hard you try, you'll always find yourself buck naked. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's a horrible life. It's a horrible life. You know, I remember Arthur Mianges, when he was, went into his office, he locked the door and he took out a gun and he was going to yeah. commit suicide. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, I was happier as a sinner. Mm -hmm. than I am now because wow. at least then I was ignorant of what is right, right. Yeah. and now I know the difference and I can't live up to it can't live up to it and the Lord says well finally finally you've come to the end of yourself because that is not my gospel so yeah. yeah, Brendan Manning had kind of a similar experience too, eh? Oh, uh, you know something? Have you ever listened to any of Brendan Manning? Oh, yes, I love him. <laughs> I love, uh, wow. You know, I mean, he's, I don't receive everything he has to say. Yeah. But um, I'll never forget the message on the... Um, compassion compassionate heart of god yeah, yeah. the compassionate heart of god mm. he was rent in his bowels yeah <laughs> he was oh my goodness that he was rent in his bowels i mean that's what compassion is yeah. you know it's one thing to have pity on somebody you can look from the far yeah. and, oh i feel sorry for him but when you have compassion compassion needs to compassionate it mm. needs to do something to alleviate the pain that's right and that's what jesus had in him 
That's right. Wow. Yeah. To experience the heart of the Father. That's what mercy is. Yeah. Glory to God. Isn't that that scripture? It's, uh, where is it? Uh, it <clears throat> talks about how Paul says it's the love of God that constrains me. Uh, yes. 2 Corinthians 5. It's so powerful. Yes. Yes, it is. The Holy Spirit's really been drawing my attention to that whole passage there. Mine too, because ever since you, you mentioned it, um, a couple of Sundays ago, I guess, because so, you didn't have church on Sunday, did you? Yeah. yeah. I'm just not there. I'm in Kokomo, Indiana. So. Oh, okay. I don't know. The last message that I listened, the last Sunday sermon yeah. I listened to, you you mentioned that, that the, it's the love of God that constrains us. And it jumped out at me too, you know, because... Um, you know, so if, if I, I hadn't been feeling the love of God at that particular time and, and it's not my feelings of love, it's his love. It's yes, his love. Amen. The love of God. <laughs> it's not my feeling love. It's the love of God. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's, and you know, that scripture in second Corinthians 5, 14, yeah, he so says, far. For the love of God constraineth us. The love of God has arrested me. Right, right. I've been arrested. I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner of the love of God because, see, it's because we thus judge. We discern something. We know something. See, you got to know. For this love to grab you like this, mm -hmm. you gotta know that yeah. if one died for all, then all were dead. He was seeing what Christ did, that mm -hmm. every human being was taken into Christ and died away mm -hmm. and raised up on a brand new platform of innocence. Right. And that doesn't mean everybody's saved. Right. But it does mean that God is not holding anything against anybody. Well, when you know that's how God sees people, right. then you have the same mind of Christ in you, then you're going to look at people in a different way. Absolutely. That's right. It's, um, I'm, I'm not sure, Beulah, you probably know, but um, the enmity that was that the, the cross stripped away the enmity, which is basically the carnal mind and the spiritual mind that are at war with one another. That's the enmity. And that actually means in the Greek, hatred. like a Exactly. Hatred. Well, the scripture tells us in Colossians that we were enemies of God in our mind. Right. It was all in our mind. It wasn't the truth. But it took Jesus, just like I read in Isaiah 25, in this mountain, mm -hmm. will I remove the veil that is upon all people? Yeah. So the veil was torn that we could see the truth of God's good view and opinion of us. Yeah. Yeah. And he died that enmity away. Absolutely. He died it away. Like the blood of Jesus just caused it to disappear. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So oh, true. I'd say, you know, when uh, um, a man was because of sin, man became dead to God. Okay. Man became dead to God, but God was never dead towards man. Right. Yeah. Okay? But we, our whole perspective of God changed. We saw him in a way that we had never seen him, you know, and it, in a twisted way, in a dark, our minds were darkened towards the true knowledge of God. Okay, and to who we were, and we were all impacted by that, that oh, yeah. sin, which, which brought forth the fruit of death. And that's why we felt orphaned in this world, right? With apart mm -hmm. from God, our Father, but it was in our darkened mind. Exactly. God was always, Amen. God, our Father, has always pursued us. He's always loved us. And yeah. He came and He saw our situation and He was just to do something about it. 2,000 years ago. <laughs> not leave us and then to take it away. 2 Corinthians 3 speaks about that veil. 
<laughs> and it says, it says, seeing in verse 12, seeing we have such hope, we use great plainness of, plainness of speech. Yeah. Not as Moses, who put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end that was to be abolished. But their minds were blinded. Mm. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, mm. which veil is done away in Christ. Right. But you know, as long as you are reading the scripture to find out what you must do mm -hmm. in order to be saved, mm -hmm. then the veil is still upon your heart. Mm -hmm. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Mm. Now, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord, the Lord is, yes. there's liberty. Mm. But we all, with an open face, an unveiled face, beholding it as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, as we can see the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is who we are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we are created in his image. And to the degree you can see him, mm -hmm. yeah. then you're changed into that same image That's right. yeah. from glory to glory. And like I've said before, this is not a progression mm -hmm. which it's true uh, that we grow into knowing who we are and as we grow in who we are the manifestation of that glory is mm -hmm. going to grow but that's not what it's talking about there because it says from glory that's apple that's away from that's yeah. a cessation it's like the what process is, of transformation. What he's talking about is the glory of the law. Remember, it just said previously that there was a glory to the law. Mm -hmm. But when you see the glory that's in the face of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. then it takes you from seeking the glory of self-effort away from that to the glory of the Lord, to God's true good view and opinion of you. But then it goes That's on, good. it goes on to say in chapter four, you know, continue reading. Therefore, whenever you see therefore, you got to see what it's there for. <laughs> Seeing we have this ministry. What ministry? The ministry of taking away the veil. Because yeah. as the heart is turned to Christ, the veil is taken away. So as we preach Christ and him crucified, and, and people are persuaded of that, then the veil is taken away so from their heart, see for and they can see the glory, God's good view and opinion Amen. that was revealed to us in Christ That's Jesus. Right. Yeah, just causes the darkness to just disappear and everything illuminates. And you know, I read something yesterday and it said, it says, when the New Testament is read through an Old Testament mindset, mm. you're only going to see law. Yeah. And then I said to myself, well, yes, that's true. But when we have a New Testament mindset, we can look at the Old Testament and see the spirit. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, you can see the spirit because there's <clears throat> the letter of the law, Kills. which you can only say it will kill. Yeah. <laughs> it does kill. <clears throat> yeah and you can only see the letter of the law as long as the veil is on the heart mm. but jesus christ is the spirit of the law 
That's right. And it was always there, but yeah. man couldn't see it. Spirit gives life. You know, I was reading in Acts where, you know, of course, Paul, you know, he had this veil, Saul had the veil over his heart, you know, until that veil was removed. He had this encounter with the resurrection life of Christ. Yeah, scales and, fell off his eyes. <laughs> that was the veil. <laughs> but what he was doing was zealous with all sincerity. He thought he was doing God a favor by, you know, doing away with the way with these people that were in the way <laughs> but when the veils were removed all of a sudden you know and he, he began to walk in the true revelation of, of god and the gospel uh it says i was reading here in acts this morning acts 28 23 to uh through 29 i won't read it all but it says talks about uh paul pre-teaching Okay, and I can just see him just saying, wow, he's seeing it and he's teaching this now, just like we're sharing the, yeah. the gospel without the veil. He says, so when they had appointed him a day, many came to him, wherever he was lodging, wherever Paul was, probably he was held kind of in, in house arrest, maybe, or something, or wherever he was lodging, to whom he he well, they brought to him and he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus. Now listen to this. He was Paul was persuading those that came to him concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets, from morning till evening. And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some dis disbelieved. See, some are going to be persuaded, and some are just going to have a hardened heart, right? Yeah, and just believe. So it says, uh, so when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. And this is the word Paul said. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah, the prophet, to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Mm. Therefore, let it be known to you, and, and the salvation of God has sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. So yeah. it's just like, you know, I mean, Jesus, Jesus said in the volume of the book, it's written on me. Yes. You know, so the, the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is all about the promise. It's all about Christ who would come and set us free. You know, the law, the prophets, Moses, the whole book, you know. And just like you were saying, you know, as the veil is taken away and we begin to see it with the eyes of the spirit instead of just the law, the carnal view, then we'll see Jesus all through the scripture. Yes, you know? absolutely. And so it's it's amazing that veil, but that veil is still remains. I mean, it's been taken away in Christ. That's right. Because of wrong doctrine and teaching. There's still a veil. Yeah, he condemned sin in the flesh through the cross. Mm -hmm. But it's it's just like Lazarus. You know, when he raised him from the dead, he he told his disciples to remove the grave cloth. Right, right. So that yes, it's done in Christ. I mean, judicially, it has been done away with. Mm -hmm. but it's yet to be experienced and people will experience the veil being taken away as the gospel is preached to them then it'll be accepted yeah. and that's that that word of life he, he tells you know the angel told paul go and stand and preach the word of life and it's that word of life you know, I heard this, and it's just like after Christ was raised from the dead, it says he breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. okay, which the Holy Spirit really wasn't poured out until Acts 2, right, upon all flesh. So what, yeah. what, was, what was happening there was, 
was Jesus, if you if you break up the, it's really what Jesus was saying, what we, he was breathing, just like when when uh, God created man and breathed into man's nostrils and man became a living soul. Mm -hmm. I believe he became fully aware of who he was and who God was at that time, yeah. alive to God. He had yeah. still not partaken of the tree of life, had he? The tree of life, but he became a living soul. Yeah. What is that living soul? It's becoming aware of who you are and who God is, okay? And so when Jesus breathed onto the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit, I believe he was saying, he was saying, be in your right mind. Mm -hmm. He was speaking light and he was, he was saying, you are now free, okay, to know who you are and to know who God your father is. Yeah, it's like the faith, the, the faith is within the, the like, Bertie's message, the one vital principle is so, so good. I've listened to that over and over, but it's like the, the Holy Spirit is the, the wind of faith, the wind of the faith of God, and that's why he breathed into them to keep them until the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. I guess, I guess what I'm saying, is I feel like the Lord says, when we go out and proclaim the word of life, we need to understand what kind of word God has put on our, on our tongue. Exactly. The ability to breathe, just like Jesus breathed onto the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. We can breathe through words, okay, right. on people. Yes. And so be in your right mind. You are free. Yeah. You know, Amen. You, you, you were you know, bound. You, at one time, we had no choice. We were yeah. bound in sin. Now we're free. We're free to choose. We're free to, to, to know God the way God has always wanted us to know it. You know, I was just listening to Felon this morning. And uh, I, it was something like he said, can you imagine, you know, how much God loves you? And, and the Lord said, no, don't, don't say that. Don't tell people to imagine. You have the words Very of good. life. Tell them. Tell them. Tell Very them. Good. And let them experience. The real thing. Not imagine yeah. something. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. And that's that you that's that I just see that correlation between the saying that Jesus breathed onto his disciples. Yeah. When we speak words, it's the breath of God. That's right. Yeah. It's a breath the words of that I words. speak, their spirit and their lives. And life. So and I don't think we we've, we've understood the power yeah. really yeah. of the words of life that God has put in us and the ability to really speak words of life. Yeah. While the enemy continues to, you know, this world of contradiction, you know, continues to persuade them towards darkness, we have the power. He says, that's why he says, arise and shine, for your light has come, yeah. right? And the glory of the Lord has risen upon yeah. you, you know? And so we have that ability to speak words of life everywhere we go through the, yeah. you know, speak the Is gospel. it any wonder that James said, you know, Sweet water and bitter doesn't come out of the same fountain. Yeah. Neither should blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth. No. Amen. And, and because we don't realize, we really, we don't really know that we know that we know the mm. power of yeah. our words. You know, Jesus didn't speak one idle word. Right. Not one idle word. An idle word can be so damaging. And you know, so many times, so many times, you know, it's funny when we were at the peak of legalism when our kids were little, my husband didn't allow any joking. And he used to say, Joking is jesting, and jesting is lying, and lying, lying is of the, the devil. devil. My kids will all quote that, okay? <laughs> but you know something? When people 
have the desire to be funny, mm. they can say very hurtful things. Oh, yeah. yeah. At the risk of somebody else being hurt. Yeah. You know? And um, we I, are, I know, like, growing up, that I mean, you know, I can understand where Jim would say that to the kids because... You know, well, I was only joking, you know, oh, like. Yeah. <laughs> the old but yeah, I'm in tears and he, well, I was yeah. only joking. But saying something that's destructive as a joke. Yeah. I mean, stop and think about it. Uh, Jesus didn't do that. Or to speak to put someone down for fun, yeah. you know, that's. It, I know, and that doesn't mean he doesn't have a sense of humor because he's extremely funny. You know, he's got a great sense of humor, but it's not offensive. It's not right. no, That's exactly right. not at the cost of Someone putting else. somebody else down. That's right. right. And I think it it really has, it goes back to knowing your full acceptance in Christ mm -hmm. and having your heart established. You know, because a lot of times when people use words of cond condescending words. You know, even in jest, is because they're not secure. Yeah. They don't know. Exactly. They don't Absolutely. Know. They don't know. To exalt themselves. You know, so it right. comes to a place of that flesh where where there's no life at all in that. Exactly. So true. And the thing is, you can't put out a law that says you can't do this because then you're right back to religion. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like. Well, we were in those intermediate stages where we were coming from one condition to another. Yeah, but the thing is, I mean, the truth of the matter is when, when the love of Christ constrains you yeah. like it did Paul, right. then all of our lives, our words will be seasoned with salt That's right. that will minister grace to the hearers. That's right. Not to put somebody down so we can get a laugh. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. We're not a stand-up comic trying to get exactly. laughs. Exactly, exactly. But you know what? God gives us a, a sense of humor, you know? Yes. And it's how that everything is really just, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, like someone said, a lot of emotions and things we grew up with we have emotions, but not all the emotions we grew up with are from God. No, because yeah, they were distorted exactly. by the carnal mind and through and all these other things. But you know, as as our hearts are established in God's love and God's grace, mm -hmm. then the humor reflects that too. You know, it'll always Absolutely. build up. Love always built. You know, exactly. Always, yeah, yes, there is a good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. There is yeah. a good sense of humor where everybody's edified and, and nobody's thrown under the bus to yeah. make somebody laugh. With no condemnation. Yeah. Yeah. Rick, you had me laughing when you, um, it was a couple weeks ago, but you said, um, and the guy giving the announcements, right? Like, I don't know exactly what it was you said, but something about um paying attention when the guy's giving the announcements and i listened to that message that was the one of where i commented in the group um and i posted the message because it was so good i listened to it four times in a row back to back awesome. because it kept speaking to me that's awesome and I, I've never done that back to back. I've listened to messages like multiple times, but not back to back like that. It was so good. And that's the spirit gives life. You know, that's what, it, you know, the flesh profits nothing, but the spirit gives life, you know. And so it's those words of life, you know, that are just, I mean, we were designed for, you know. And uh, when we're talking about, we have this, this word of life, in us you know and we can speak those words of life to others it reminded me of the valley of dry bones in ezekiel 37 you know and god says can these bones live and and uh he says only you know if they can and he says prophesy to the bones and say to them oh dry bones hear the word of the lord Amen. You know? 
And so when we begin to see, I love that second Corinthians five, because it just says so much, you know, in that, uh, it helped us to begin to see people the way God sees them. Amen. Instead of seeing the, the, uh, seeing them the way that religion has taught us, you know, and, and, uh, we begin to, uh, then carry this word of life and we see them we're just seeing really the only difference between many people you know uh, in the world and us is what we have come to see and what they still don't see you know and it's about speaking words of life over them to helping dispel that darkness and then to see the goodness of god to see the love that god has for them you know and in that scripture we are also seeing that Paul is describing what Christ did yeah. through his death, burial, and resurrection, mm -hmm. and also the taking away of the veil by speaking, because he said God was in Christ reconciling the whole world back to himself, not imputing their sins unto them, and we are ambassadors in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled. Be ye reconciled. That's right. And so he's saying God reconciled himself back to the world. Mm -hmm. But now the ball is in your court. And you've got to allow your heart to be persuaded. Yeah. So you'll be reconciled back to God. Mm-hmm. You know, I was listening to a message by film a couple of weeks ago, and it just blessed my heart so much because he was talking about, um, he was talking about how that um, their eyes were opened, you know, on the road to Emmaus when Jesus broke the bread, when they sat at the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the eyes are opened in speaking. And he said, when he was talking this, I heard the Lord so clearly say, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Mm -hmm. Now, I have always used that scripture in the context of receiving mm -hmm. expectancy. Open your mouth and like, a baby bird opens their mouth, mother bird will fill it. And I always saw that scripture is, if I open my mouth in expectancy, the Lord will satisfy me. But when he said it this time, it wasn't that way. He's saying, open your mouth to speak. Mm. And remember what he said? He said, don't worry about what you're going to say in that day, for I'll give you the very words. Mm -hmm. Now take that with, open your mouth and I'll fill it. I'll right. give you the words to say. And you know, when Jack and, and Michael preached, mm -hmm. that's exactly what happens mm -hmm. because they're talking. Yes. And one inspires the other. That's right. And, and I love that kind of preaching because it is, yeah. it is, it's, it's like Kavor moments, mm. boom, boom, boom. Be, because as you're hearing the word. It's continuity. Yeah. As you hear the word, it quickens and it makes you alive. Now what you're going to say is going to be so alive and it's going to quicken right the here. other one. And I really, really believe that that is the way that it was supposed to be. Because mm -hmm. remember, he says, let the prophet speak by two or three. Yeah. And when one gets the revelation, let the yeah, other stay quiet. silent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening. It's yeah. the power of the Holy Spirit. It's spontaneous combustion. And yeah. it's so alive. Yeah, that's what I was thinking was happening here. The Lord woke me up this morning, you know, and Rick says, um, I'm going to go get in the word. And I felt like God said, just stay and meditate on that for a minute. 
So I was meditating about being in the word and then first John or John 1, 1 said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So he says that the good news is that you are in the word 24 seven. <laughs> yeah, that's good. In us, mm. You know, and so we are always in the word, but the power comes in what you were saying when we're together like this and we're fellowshipping and we're expressing the word and we're opening our mouths and the word is coming out. It something about that ignites the word even more, you know, mm. within each other. And that's the fellowship of the brethren, mm. you know, yes. sweet and powerful. You know, even in the beginning, God said. So there's something about the spoken word. Yeah. There's power in the spoken word. There is. There is, yes. Uh, the Psalm 103, you were, uh, I don't, I guess you weren't there earlier, but he, he talked, uh, that's just reminded me. And this is what's happening here, okay? The Zoom meeting, we're speaking. We're speaking the word of life. I mean, there's no, you know, when we come on here, there's rarely any kind of, a, you know, a agenda, a plan, you know, a format. It's just like, okay, we're, we're on Holy Spirit, you know, and uh, we just begin to speak the words of life and things are stirred up with each other, in each other. And that's really, that's, that's really what a lot of the prophet, true prophesying is all about. Is yes. one word stirs up another word. That's right. And another person, right. and one speaks, yes. and each one has their turn to speak. But it's not speaking by the flesh or or out of our reason. It's by the spirit. We're just right. speaking. Amen. You know, you know, Rick. There's, there's, there's something that happens in there as we speak. We could just like I've been sitting here listening most of the time. Right. But when we do speak, there is a answer in us that responds in our heart of what the person is saying. So the communion is being put together by each of us. If there was anything wrong, I'm sure one of us would speak up. <laughs> but the, the idea is that we are being fed, we are being nurtured, and it's all good. Mm -hmm. yeah, the uh, ethics of it, the uh, word of it, mm -hmm. is coming across right out of the scripture as we have all learned in the scripture and therefore we uh we feed on this yeah we don't have to be the speaker right, That's right. No, amen and mm. you know it says let the others judge yeah yeah let the others discern mm -hmm. so yeah it's good you know me and uh when we uh uh grace life fellowship began several years ago you know, me and David Hawkins, we preached together. Yeah. It was tag team preaching. That's all we did. And, you know, there's nowhere in scripture that says only one person stands up. Oh, no. In fact, he sent them out two by two. You know? true, yeah. And yeah. out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. So even tradition sometimes I think has caused us to you know, we, we just kind of go along because this is the way it's always done. Yeah. Been done. <laughs> you know, I've really seen more response a lot of times, really dynamic response when two people are up there. Yes. Um, just, you know, going back and forth like that. Then, you know, the, the scripture in um, 1 Corinthians 14 says in verse 29, let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. Mm -hmm. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is spontaneous combustion. <laughs> this, is, this, this is, wow, you said something that lit me up. Um, for ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all be comforted and the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophet. Mm. Mm. You know, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. And the thing is, what I prophesy is going to be subject to what I believe. 
<laughs> mm. Okay, you're only, and I mean, let me tell you something. I used to preach passionately. Mm -hmm. And I was passionately wrong. <laughs> yeah. Been there, done that. You understand? Yeah. You can only prophesy from what is in your heart. Yeah. And let me tell you something. You don't want to subject yourself to a lot of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, right. if, they, if they are legalists, they're gonna mm. they're gonna come out with stuff that is not good. Right. Yeah. Well, this has been good, I think. <laughs> yes, it has. Yes. yes. Uh, they always Stephanie, looking at this. Quiet. Huh? Huh? Stephanie's quiet today. Stephanie. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so when Stephanie speaks. <laughs> I'm just taking it all in like and I just sit here kind of in amazement going wow this is everything you've been talking to me about God you know <laughs> like, they're I'm saying talking. you're talking the same things to them too wow <laughs> and it never ceases to amaze me that you know the stuff that he's speaking to me you know, you all are hearing too, which then is just a greater encouragement to me that, okay, I'm on the right track. You know, when everything around me is saying it's bad, everything is bad, you know, like this word will never take hold around you and nobody wants to hear this. Nobody wants to believe it. You know, it's just a comfort and a reassurance that no, they do want to hear it. There is something going on that God is the one seeking them out. Yes. He's speaking to them, you know, and just don't let myself be fall for that temptation that that's tormenting me. Yeah. You know, he keeps reminding me is that is that a peaceful thought? No, it's not. He's <laughs> like then you don't have to don't meditate on that. That's right. Just say no. Nope. Yeah. You know, and thank God, you know, that has been, it's been way easier for me to say, wait, no, wait a minute. Nope. That's not peace. Therefore, it's not from God. Therefore, I don't have to give it one second of my attention. That's right. Amen. And so, you know, just, just that that God will put the words in my mouth if something needs to be said when it needs right. to be said. Amen. That's right. You know, so, so many times people have said, and I used to get snagged with it years ago until I knew a greater truth. People would say in a circumstance, well, you should have said this or you should have said yes. that. And I go, oh, yeah, I should have. And now mm -hmm. I say, don't should have me. If I should have said it, <laughs> The Lord would have given it to me. Yeah. You know, you may have thought that I should have, but uh, you know, you know the yeah. the word that came to me as she was saying that, like, oh, nobody's going to listen to this word. He says, "So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth; it shall not return unto me void, but it will yeah. accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where yeah. I yeah. sent it." So remember. Uh, those trees bear fruit in their season. There's going to be a season right. that you're going to see the fruit manifest. You know, don't be weary in well doing. Amen. For after what? After a time you shall reap if you faint not. That's Just right. keep doing what you're doing, girl. Just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be it can be difficult when you don't when you're not surrounded by fellowship like you yeah. guys there in North Carolina, you yeah. know. And I know Stephanie, you know, when I've listened back to the Bible studies, I've I've sensed that that you're you're kind of in the same situation as me, where you know, like this is this is 
really all we have is to listen yep. to messages and whatever Zoom meetings are available when we're available, right? Like, yeah. And um, so, I mean, thank God that we have this because this wasn't in existence for 10 years for me and I nearly right. died. That's how I fell back in. That's how I lost my identity because it was like, okay, I couldn't, I was be I was persecuted from the churches in the community because they were they rejected the grace of God and the unconditional. It was always well, where do you draw the line? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I always yeah. say I don't think God draws any lines. You know. No. I always say I like these Zoom meetings because you guys make me feel normal. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes. yeah, that's true too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, it's good though. We just need to, uh, and the Lord knows where we're at, you know, sure. and we have the Holy Spirit in us and he's the comforter, true comforter that's and right. encourager, but the body is, is, is important. You know, the, the, the coming together, even through zoom, you know, because yeah. it is words of life and there's nourishment that takes place here. There's you know, and there's nourishment that takes place. So I think that um, the Lord would have us to avail ourselves to whatever is available. Yeah. Okay. And if we don't avail ourselves to what is available, mm -hmm. then we can um, we can lack. Yeah. In right. okay. But his grace is sufficient mm -hmm. for us when there is nothing available. Remember right. John on the Isle of Patmos right. in prison. Mm -hmm. He got a great revelation of Jesus Christ. So <laughs> God yeah. is able no matter where we are, okay? So I think that if if God, if God makes something available to us, um, it's because we need it. But if it's not available to us, he can talk to us through the cracks in the wall. <laughs> yeah, well, we still have oh, yeah. that planted word that's able to save our soul. You that's know? right. Absolutely. Um, but, Absolutely. Yeah. Like for those 10 years, he would show up in the weirdest ways. Like I remember watching the terminal with tom hanks i don't know if anybody's seen it mm -hmm. but he couldn't speak english right mm -hmm. but there was a prophetic message of the gospel throughout the whole movie and like through dreams and just you know like i was in the cave man i was like so isolated from anybody that believed the truth and it's like non-christians were a bad influence in the way that they lived their lives, right? Even though I loved them, I didn't like to be around them too much because they all drank or smoked dope or partied, you know, and I couldn't handle that. And I couldn't handle, I try to go to church every once in a while and I'd meet the old fellowship. I remember um, he was our best friend that had home, that ran home church with us. And I showed up and he says, oh, Corey gave me a hug. And he said, welcome back to the fold. And it was like, I never freaking left the fold. I, I couldn't go back after that. It's like, this is how they see me that I left the fold because I got divorced, you know, like. The prodigals returned. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, Tom Hanks was also in Castaway, where he wound up talking to a volleyball for several years. Yeah, so. Wilson. My daughter loved, she used to, she loved Wilson. A good I thought one. about, you know, if I ever had to do Zoom by myself, I would, not that it would come to that, but I'd use a sock puppet. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing stronger every day. So oh, good. I love. So yeah, she's getting better. Just appreciate your prayers for her. And uh that she's uh and we'll close on this. This scripture, this is scripture that, and maybe you can put something to this, but it came to me while we were talking about words in our mouth. 
in Psalm 103, he says, in Psalm 103, 5, he says, he satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Mm. Mm. What does that mean to you all? He satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay. Well, the scripture that comes to my mind Yes, hold on, let me see here, Isaiah. Uh, they that wait upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is, because this is talking about you'll mount up with the wings of eagles. Mm -hmm. So as, you know, your mouth is your receiving. You know, I open my mouth and I receive, okay? So when I have an expectancy, when I am waiting on the Lord, when I allow his thoughts to become my thoughts, mm -hmm. That satisfies me. That renews my strength. Mm -hmm. And you know, that word renew yeah. is not like getting a second wind. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, okay, I got a second. No, it's a divine exchange. That word renew is to exchange. So when it says he renews our strength, what he's doing is he's exchanging our strength for his strength. Mm. He's taking my human strength and giving me supernatural strength. When I can see what God sees about me, it energizes me. It pulls me up. I don't care what pit you're in, baby. It's going to renew you. It's going to energize you. And when you, it's all about seeing, you know, yeah. you can, you can be sitting home feeling depressed, feeling weak, feeling inadequate. But when God's thoughts come to you and you grab a hold of it and you twist your thoughts with his thoughts, it's woohoo, baby. I'm not, a, I'm not a victim. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. Let me at them. Let me out there. Let me share this good news. That's right. Where we don't just receive in our mouth, but we proclaim with our mouth. Because yes. yeah. when, you know, it it reminds me of that, you know, at times I know when the world is pressing in on me, it's hard for me to communicate to God, to anybody. I just don't talk. But when God, when I, but at the same time, I'm hoping in God. I'm waiting on God to renew my strength because I can't just start praising God as a work or anything like that. You know, like I'm just beyond, beyond doing anything in my own strength. Right. So, and he shows up and then it's like a wave of his grace comes over me. And the next thing, you know, I'm singing and I'm laughing and I'm chattering it up. Like yeah. I am now, <laughs> right? <laughs> the abundance of the, the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So yes. it's really about believing. You know, when you believe what God believes, then it's going to come out of your mouth, right? right. Yes. It's going to be some joy comes out of your mouth. And it's not just parroting words. You know, a lot of people have been taught through different doctrines, again, that it's just yeah. about speaking words. That's right. That's a word. But, uh, and I've got 4% left on my computer here. So I'm trying to get <laughs> right in here before that thing goes out. Is that close enough? Throw that one over there. That one over. You know, this morning when I was in the shower and the Lord was speaking to me about the word that I'm going to share, um, he showed me in my heart that, you know, when Paul and Silas were in prison and they were praising God, you know, that scripture has been taken and perverted and said, you know, we need to praise God for a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Now, to praise God for a breakthrough has all your attention on self. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this so I can get something. Right. Yeah. But they were praising God for who he was. Yeah. And it came from the heart. That's right. Rick said. And there was, and listen, there was a breakthrough. But let me say this. Had they been praising God to get a breakthrough, when those doors opened, they would have been out of here. That's so true. <laughs> yeah. But they weren't praising God for a breakthrough. They were praising God for the love of God yeah. that was in them. And right. when the doors opened, they didn't go anywhere. They didn't go anywhere. They, they cared more about those people than themselves. Yeah. They were having too Just good of a time. Him, baby. <laughs> Celebration of life. Amen. It's been good. It's been good. It's uh, about an hour and a half. It goes by quick, right? It does. Ah. Yeah. God bless everyone. So it's, I always look forward to it and uh, look forward to you. Beulah, hearing you Sunday. Yeah, well, you know what? Yeah, I you know, the phone, Michael's phone wasn't plugged in, I don't think. Uh, I wasn't no, hearing you. There's no audio system. Oh, really? Well, it was there when I left. <laughs> All gone. Oh, really? Oh, the whole system's gone? The or whole system is gone. Okay. So what are you speaking through? Well... What am I going to speak through on I mean, Sunday? Did you have a microphone? No. Uh, the couple that came and did the music, they brought their sound system. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So they were able to use the microphone, but we couldn't plug in the phone to the thing because there wasn't any. Okay. I'll find out where that's at. I'm not there. So. Well, we, we do have a system in the back. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you about it. There's one in the closet back there. Okay. Okay. Well, I, what I I'm said. Not sure what, I'm not sure what all was uh, <laughs> taken. So I'll have and, to. Well, everything that was in that cabinet. So the microphones and everything? Uh, the microphones are there. Okay. The microphones are there. The, what I was going to do, because we weren't able to use the TVs for any words. Right. So I said, okay, well, what I'll do is I'll get some easy songs that everybody knows the words to, so we don't have to see the TVs. And my um, amplifier will be my Bose, which I can plug into my computer. Okay. And then I'm just going to have to speak loud. And also, I when I do the message, I will do it like I do in the car and have my earphones on. So I've got my speak, my um, microphone. Yeah. Unless well, you can do something else. There may be someone that's going to go over there tomorrow and that uh, knows how to set that stuff up. So I will get on the phone and see if we can get him to set something together oh that would be awesome i didn't know it was not, we'll wing it you know you do it like you do in the car that's all. yeah i mean we'll get that word out and we'll have some amplification of the music so yeah you know we're good to go whatever it would be wonderful if everything was cool but whatever we just yeah. you know that's, that's why i like this crowd <laughs> we, don't fall we don't fall to pieces. <laughs> no. This is how we roll, baby. <laughs> Blessed are the flexible. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. They won't yeah, be we've broken. Got a, we've got a Gumby ministry here. That's right. <laughs> Amen. You've got to be flexible. Yeah, nice and moist. You know, if you're brittle, you snap. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, this has been good. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Are you on okay. Facebook, Stephanie? Are you on Facebook? Yes, I am. Okay, I'll look you up and add you. Okay, great. And right. if they do resolve that situation, let me know because then I won't be, you know, stuck with, you know, 
little porous. Yeah. I wish I was closer. I could fix it myself, but you know. Hey, say la vie. I will. Uh, well, uh, I'll, if I find out something, I'll let you know. Okay. Well, listen, everybody have a blessed day. God bless. Yes, if you too. Okay, bye. 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 bye.